So is there, do you have a, like, let's say a photo session. I know sometimes you go out and you take photos, you know, and, and it's a, a set scenario. Like you kind of know you're going to be working with stationary stuff. Um, I'm going to guess though, by looking at a bunch of your photos, like not many of them are staged. It's just a controlled environment. It, they all seem to be pretty natural photos. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think sometimes you get into a little bit of both where, um, you know, you're out there, you're trying to capture a moment, but you know, sometimes maybe if it's more of a commercial or, you know, corporate shoot, you're, you're trying to get a certain look. Um, but, uh, you know, you just develop an eye for it over time and you, I think anticipating, you know, what, what's going to happen, where's the lighting kind of putting yourself into position you know, to capture that scene properly, to tell that right. story, you know, with a snapshot, that's kind of the end game. Is it, uh, so like me, I grew up as a musician. I haven't played in years, but it's one of those things where you can never listen to music the same way. Right. Because you kind of know what all goes into it. All oh, the building yeah. blocks, you know, yep. you're thinking about the progressions and the equipment they're using. You And I think of, photography a lot of the same way like it got it's got to be exhausting at times because uh-huh. you're constantly factoring lighting this and that do you find yourself now when you go on these hunts like it it's just more natural after some time or is it still like a you catch yourself making the conscious notations of that yeah i mean it's it can be it can be stressful at times and you know some of that is self-imposed um and I'd say probably more often than not, the conditions just suck, you know, and you're, yeah. you're trying to fight Always. something that you, you're just trying to fight something you, you have can't control, but every now and then you get a little lucky, you know, yeah, you uh, get one out of a hundred. <laughs> yeah. And that that's just those moments, you know, those shots, that's what keeps me going. It's pulling a needle out of a haystack, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know, because it's like you go out thinking, oh, I'll just get some good pictures today from the social page or whatever. And A, I'm horrible at it because I get caught up in the moment and I don't even think about a camera. Or, you know, like you said, your conditions are always wrong. You never have proper lighting. Right. Um, so I, I guess we could introduce you again. People might not be familiar with your voice. Uh, we've got Chris Ingram here from Gundog Magazine. And what... I'm going to have you list the affiliates too. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So uh, Chris Ingram here, I'm the digital editor for both Gundog and Wildfowl over at the Outdoor Sportsman Group. Um, and uh, I do a little, you know, freelance and contributing on the side as a photographer and a writer and uh, recently just been very interested in, in hounds and hound hunting. Not because you're a houndsman. Or you even uh, own a hunting dog, right? I mean, you know, technically, no. <laughs> <laughs> still still trying to, to earn that, yeah. Yeah, but we've had lots of conversations. You know, the fact that you were drawn to this and, you know, doing your own research and digging into the sports. And, you know, now it's a profession where you got a lot of, like, you jumped in with both feet. Absolutely. There's no doubt. That was a big I- jump. Yeah, man. You know, it's just, it's a true testament that if you want something bad enough, you know, you can get after it. And, and I am always ready to say that I've had some tremendous help, you know, and support along the way. Yeah. That's good. Well, and you know, the thing is with our ambassador program, we have a lot of people contributing. In fact, your article, I know this is going to launch later, but your new year's resolution one just launched today. And you've been writing some of those articles and the photos. But there's a lot of people out there. I mean, we get emails all the time of people wanting to be ambassadors or contribute photography stuff. Um, And it's really hard. Like, I don't understand a lot of it. Okay. Like, I know how to point and click. I got an iPhone and it works for that. And that's like the extent of it for the most part. But there are a lot of people out there that really are trying to, to make a go of, you know, getting some stuff published you know, whether it's in our ambassador blog or in magazine publications and then the photography stuff as well. Mm-hmm. And I've noticed a lot of that is like, I enjoy writing, but everywhere you want to freelance to, they usually ask for photographs with it, oh, you know, sure. fo- for the article. 
And that's one thing where I just really struggle. And I think that if people had a little better understanding and it wasn't so overwhelming, they would realize mm-hmm. that, you know, they could do this too. It's not oh, like yeah. it's this untouchable thing. Yeah. So if you were, let's say you were talking to someone like myself who has no knowledge of it, is there like a go-to kind of baseline of things that make that recipe for a good photo or a usable photo? And and I'll interject one more thing. When I say good photo, I don't mean that in a, oh, that's a really nice or this is you know, not that's a personal choice. Yeah. But there are requirements like for a print ad, you have to have a certain quality of photograph that's going to hold up and it's going to be the right pixel size. Sure. So any, any tips for a good base for those kind of people? Yeah. I'll, um, I'll try to just kind of start talking and feel free to, to keep me in bounds here and on track, but you know, you bring up (laughs) a lot of buddy. You're good, man. This is going to be easy. (laughs) Um, you bring up a lot of good points, you know, um, and that's photography truly is an art form, you know, and, and the viewer has a different experience depending on their background, their interest or, or whatever context they're in. So, you know, I might see something and say, "Wash, that's not technically perfect, you know, or the composition, the lighting is off, but I tell you what, time and time again, my best photos and the photos that people gravitate toward tell a story in, in a snapshot of an image, you know, Mm -hmm. it needs no caption. It needs no, no introduction. And, you know, a lot of photography is simply being in the right place at the right time. Um, but I feel when you can kind of refine that craft is when you can start to anticipate, um, you know, so if you're out there with your dogs or you're out there on a hunt, you know, you kind of know what's going to happen. So just be ready. Um, And, you know, don't be afraid to talk to people. Hey, uh, can you kind of stand here? The light's coming down or, um, you know, let's move this around, move that around. But, um, you know, another another misconception is people think that you got to have a DSLR, a mirrorless camera. And to work professionally, there's there's some arguments behind that. But the quality of the images that are coming out of our modern uh, mobile phones here, our iPhones and Androids is is mm-hmm. pretty stellar. Uh, they're insane. The, like over the last oh ten gosh. years, right? Like it's not even comparable. Literally, like the megapixel count in some of these new phones is rivaling the cameras of just a couple of years ago. Right. Um, so that's when it becomes kind of what you're seeing, you know, in front of you, and if you can capture that, so it becomes less about the hardware and more about you know, what's going on in your brain. Um, but there's, there's some basics, you know, I always tell people, look at your lighting, um, you know, look at, uh, bright highlights and dark shadows, look at avoiding busy backgrounds. Um, a lot of times, you know, and I'm not going to say there's anything wrong with it, but if you're showing the head blown off an animal or, you know, there's lots of blood and gore, you know, that might not be as well perceived. Sure. But, um, you know, just think about your audience and, um, and think about how you can, how you can pair an image with the story that you're trying to tell. So, well, you know, and that's funny you put it that way because it does tell the story and there, I, I mean, I see it all the time. There are guys that always put up really respectful, uh, harvest photos. And, and I use the term respectful because I feel that that is done in a conscious effort. You, sure. you know, those guys are are taking the time and they're prepping the game prior to their photos. You know, I'm not that guy. I hardly ever take a picture or anything, Uh but you know, to think that somebody goes to the effort and cleans the blood or tucks a tongue or, you know, something that I don't know, softens the harshness of it. Like it's a heavy situation. Yeah. We're taking a life for a purpose. Like that's heavy stuff. But at the same time, I feel like good harvest photos are always, uh, it's just like the final hat tip to yep. the game. Like it's sure. respectful. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I just want to jump in too, because I think a lot of people get hung up on, you know, focusing on those kill shots, those, those grip and grins, the hero shots. And that's one of the things that motivates me, especially with diving more into this hound and hound hunting thing is that there's a lot more to the story. You know, there's, there's the race, there's the bond, there's the fellowship, there's so much, so many more different pieces, and everybody that's out there has the ability to capture that 
that part, those parts of the story as well, you know? And, well, those are the, the guaranteed part almost, right? Like, you know, you're going to be there with your, you don't know if you're going to get a bear or a that's cat right. or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's like the process is, is always my big thing. And that's the biggest untold story of what happens. You know, people want to assume what happens during that process, but yet, like, I mean, we've got a ton of people that contribute stuff for the calendars and social media. And it's, it's cool to see, you know, 90% of the photos probably are just dogs or, or people, you mm-hmm. know, around the dogs and the lifestyle. Yeah. Well, and, and the other thing, you know, man, I'm guilty of it. I think we're all guilty of it to some degree is we want to get that gratification from the gram, you know, from our followers. Like we want those likes and clicks and so on, you know, so we're, we're pushing ourselves to get something and it's got to be perfect. And man, I've frustrated myself time and time again. And, you know, when you kind of just stop and reset, you know, remind yourself what, what, yeah what, what got you out there in the first place and, and looking for those little moments, you know, like I said, in that recent blog, you know, it's the dog's first time on track, or you've got a new hunter out, you know, a new experience, maybe it's a new location. That's exciting. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely. And, you know, in the industry that you're in, and like I say, these people that are wanting to contribute beyond the social media side, even, you know, there, there's always going to be the Instagram and the Facebook and the, the stuff like that. But as far as wanting to contribute and do bigger, um, mm-hmm. like print magazine or, or something like that, since you've been doing this and you have an eye, it, like you've got a secret sauce, right? <laughs> I mean, there, there's like certain things that you, that really grab you as a photographer. What are, what are your most favorite subjects or, or, parts of that experience that stand out and grab you yeah for sure well no it does totally um like i said i really do look at my craft of photography as maybe kind of half intentional and like half luck right um but i feel that certainly my best images and and i think the other ones that are well liked show something that's universal uh, it, it may be a particular dog breed or a particular, you know, scene, but the tone, the theme, the emotion that's evoked from that is universal. And so sure. now you have a piece of content that speaks to everybody. Um, right. And so, you know, that's that's what I'm looking at. Um, but like I said, there's a lot of things that people can do just by by capturing those moments as they go. And, and I think it's really important. Again, storytelling is, is super important to this lifestyle and our culture. Um, and that's one way to preserve it too. I've, yeah. I've actually made it an incredible point to start taking photographs of people that I hunt with, um, just to preserve those memories. Um, and I'm not talking about, you know, we, we kill the limit or, or did anything spectacular, but it was just, you know, making a new friendship, having a new experience. Yeah. No. And that's one thing I regret over the years is I don't have a lot of photos, you know, of going back and seeing like days at bear camp when I first started, you know, the guys that you hunt a couple of years with, and then they, they outlaw something and you don't hardly see them anymore, you know? And yeah. Well, you just never know. I mean, our, our kids grow up too fast and, you know, people move away, families, this, this and that happens. Um, mm-hmm. It's, <laughs> I, uh, I think Buddy said it the other day is that, you know, and I found myself too, sometimes I'll be out there and just thinking like, either I'm not going to be able to do this someday because I'm old and decrepit or <laughs> like I had for the first time, there's a, a cover where I started, I became a bird hunter it got sold this year and it's going to be posted to hunting next year. And like, nice. that was like an emotional experience that I had to go through about, you know, kind of surrendering to <laughs> the ways of the world. Like right? I said, so these things are important to, to capture along the way. So as far as capturing, you know, cause most of us, I'm going to lump a lot of us into the same group. You know, we're just walking, we're doing what we do mm-hmm. and we're just taking a photo like, Oh, there's the dog tree click oh yeah and then there's other people that are really good at it you know and they're figuring out angles and trying to get lighting right and make that just 
I don't know, iconic photo, like the, mm-hmm. the photos that just reach out and grab you. So you, you've mentioned that the lighting is really big, mm-hmm. but as far as camera angle, sure. I guess I have a question for you and then I'd kind of like your, your tips on it. But I'm assuming that when you're walking along on these hunts, a lot of the time you're just at standard level, right? You're walking and you're taking a photo of things that happen, you know, um, just sporadically, sure. right? You're not staging any of that. But when you get to a situation where you can kind of, I, I use the word stage loosely. I don't mean that as an insult or to take no. away from it. Yeah. But if if you have a situation where you have your time and you can adjust and you can make that, what kind of difference or effects do different camera angles give you on the subject? Is that something you can kind of fill us in on? Yeah, no, that's a great point, Jason. Um, it makes all the difference. It really does. Um, I've found, especially with like dogs, if I'm not on my belly on the ground, I'm not going to get a good shot. Um, or if really? I'm not, you know, at a higher angle, it's the the more that you can adjust the camera angle, highs, lows, you know, think outside the box, do something different, the more interesting that photo is going to be because it's going to be a different perspective. Um, maybe you're putting your subject in to a wide angle landscape, you know, or you're focusing up real tight, real close. Um, it's, it's kind of just creating something that's interesting and that's different. Um, so it's all about the camera angle. And a lot of times here, it could be climbing up on top of a truck, you know, to, to get that, that tailgate drop, or, you know, it might be getting underneath the dog while they're treeing. Um, it might be even, you know, people starting to take videos or phone timers, you know, take a little tripod out, um, put a little something on and you can kind of do some self filming or I've been starting here. A lot of people that will bring their significant others out, you know, to start taking some shots. Um, but we, I'll be honest. I, when I had plum tree. I hired a photographer to go out with us for a day. Just like, hey, here's your money. Come take a bunch of pictures. Give them to me when you're done. Because I'm not going to do it. Yeah. And I tell you what, if we're talking, um, at least for this second here, to hound hunters, them dogs are about some of the hardest subjects to photograph. I was coming off of kind of like (laughs) duck dogs and pointing dogs that you can hold up, you know? (laughs) <laughs> there's no holding lo- up a hound dog there is right? nothing i remember i went on my first bear run it was like when that dog box opened those dogs were gone and i hadn't even turned my camera on and i was like okay i see what's up that's now. how it's gonna be today yeah yeah so yeah. you know don't be discouraged uh just kind of look at the the activity that you're trying to capture so that being said you know what else can you do that that's different you know right yeah and it seems like those are a lot of the photos that, I don't know, it's like the magic uh, the magic sauce again. It's like certain songs. I go back mm-hmm. to that because the musician's roots, they just, they're, they're going to be a hit or they're catchy. You know, you can't help it. There's something in that makeup that makes it grab you. And I look at that, like the, the photography stuff. Luckily, I get to see a ton of it. <laughs> and we've got some great contributors. But it is usually off angles. You know, like some of my favorite are a low focal point, not even like looking up a tree. You're not trying to get multiple subjects sometime, but it's like that camera is just off that dog's haunch and it's looking up like it elongates the dog. It defines everything. You could geek out on it all day long. Well, and and I'll tell you, there's there's certain shots where I know if I have a specific lens or I'm looking for a certain look, but. I'll admit it's a little bit of trial and error sometimes, you know, where you, you take, uh, you know, a sequence of shots and you happen to get that one. Um, it's just like hunting. It really is. Yeah. It's hunting, hunting with a camera. Uh, sometimes you, you strike gold and sometimes you don't. How many photos do you think you take in a session? Like if oh. you're going out on a hunt, I, you come home with, I'm guessing, hundreds of photos after yep. the day. Yep. If I don't, I mean, if I'm out for an hour or two, if I don't come home with three to 500 images, I know I'm in trouble. Uh, And how how many of those (laughs) are like 
quality that are going to work a handful i'm assuming right yeah yeah and i you know i i i'll call that down to 50 or 60 and and maybe kind of have 20 to 30 in the end that are are good that will kind of tell that entire story of mm-hmm. that there might sometimes be two three or five that are just like the winners you know yeah um but and and that's you know with with our cell phones and our cameras don't be afraid to shoot you know the only way that you hurt yourself is on the back end of having to go through everything but it's not like film days you you know you can go through and just delete oh yeah totally you you have this 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 instant response of well that didn't work you know let's get it again so right Mm mm-hmm yeah, that's just it. You can set your phone on burst mode, you know, and take 50 photos like that. Oh, yeah. And go through and find maybe one of them that actually is usable. Yeah, and there's some really neat features that are packed into our phones with the time lapse and slow-mo, panoramas, portrait modes. I mean, um, and, you know, even the editing, that's a big thing, too. Sure, I, I use, you know, Adobe software and what have you, but there's pretty robust software even in our phones to crop and change the lighting and you know and that's where you really set yourself apart as as a photographer is in your style you know your editing that's that's another piece of the puzzle there so i'm going to ask you a question okay when it comes to photo editing do you ever find yourself looking at photos and thinking man that would be a lot better if they just back to this off you know because with the day of instagram and you know all these photo editing apps it's almost like oh it looks different it pops a little bit it's yeah but it's not like a a method behind it like should you are there certain filters you should watch over doing like I, for example i like to sharpen my photos i like mm-hmm. to see dog's hair like the ones sure. that i'm taking i like to see the definition but then I look back at some of them I've done and it's like, man, that it doesn't look right. So, yeah. I mean, is there a caution in overdoing it with these filters to where it's almost cartoonish? Uh, yeah. You know, again, photography is very stylistic and, and, you know, the judgment, if you will, is in the eye of the beholder. Um, I, sure. We've all seen some images that are overdone. Um, I can only think that it's, you know, somebody that's just, starting out and they're they're trying to find their way and we've i've been there we've all been there you, right you, you go through ah that's that's too much you go back and you look at your earliest photos and uh you know they're they're not quite what you got going out now but um you know again it, it's it's just stylistic um and if i like it who cares if you if you like what you got exactly. you know that's all that matters but um i think there's certain kind of parameters you can you can fall within, but usually they're kind of self-governing, you know? Yeah. More artistic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's no right or wrong way to take a photo, to edit, you know, any of this. Um, We all have things that, that we like more and we like less and it's, um, it's never ending too. You know, I constantly looking at the work of others and talking to my friends about what they're doing and seeing what gear they're using. And yeah. So speaking of gear then, what what kind of setup are you using usually? And do you use a combination of your phone even at your level? Or that... <laughs> you know, um, I think Trade I... Trade secret. No, I got no secrets. I, I mentioned earlier that I'm consciously trying to use my phone more. And the reason why is because when a moment happens, it doesn't matter what equipment you have. I can't tell you how many times I've been in a situation where somebody had their phone and they got a better photo because I either didn't get it at all or I didn't have time to, you know, dial in and, and get sure. my settings or whatever. So it's, again, it's one of those things where when the moment hits you, the, the best, the best phone you got is, or the best camera you have is the one you got. Um, right. but, uh, yeah, I, I've used the Canon, uh, ecosystem for a number of years. I'm, I'm shooting one of their mirrorless cameras now, uh, the Canon R6, um, and, uh, I'll, I'll also say that probably my favorite camera is the original Canon 5D. I think it's turning 17 years old this year. Um, but I've had, you know, magazine covers and, and I'd probably most of my work actually published, uh, from that old camera, 
again. Well, so cool. it's, yeah, you know, it's, it's a little bit kind of geeking out on vintage gear, but what I really like is it's just kind of, you know, you and, and the sensor, you and the exposure triangle. It, sure. There's no fancy bells and whistles and it doesn't cheat things for you. It's just very simplified, you it's know, kind of raw. Yeah, exactly. It's like records but, versus <laughs> MP3. <laughs> that's it, man. You got it. Yeah. Yep. Well, and it's hard. Like I carry a camera with me, you know, I carry a Nikon, um, and yeah, I've gotten some good photos out of it, but at the same time, like you, if I'm riding around in the truck hunting, it's in its bag, hanging off the back of the seat. Mm. It's not there. You know, something, you hear the dogs coming, you're focusing on that. Yeah. You don't have time to get your camera out, get yeah. your lenses on, get ready. Next thing you know, animals across the road, you missed mm-hmm. your shot anyway, and you had a split second <laughs> where... You know, it, it seems like with these higher quality cameras, what a lot of people that I talk to are doing is they're taking videos yep. and then they're just taking the still frame from the video so that they can kind of cherry pick and get the best of best chances to catch the image Sure, and still have a high quality. Is that something you've messed with at all? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, uh, you know, technically speaking, um, you know, from a per- perfection standpoint, it, it might be better to use photo for photo video for video but i mean sure. both our our hardware and our software are more than capable of doing that so that's a great option i i see a lot of people doing that um and if you're trying to just preserve something for yourself it doesn't matter what the resolution looks like sure you know but um yeah i i suppose you know from an industry standpoint if you're trying to get published um, there, there might be, you know, kind of a, a threshold of what you can and cannot achieve depending on your equipment. Um, you know, and when people are paying you for your work to get into a magazine, they're going to be looking for a certain quality. Sure. And that just, that just kind of comes with the, with the business, but. Uh, so this is going to be all Greek to me, but sure. as far as a guideline, if somebody is looking at that, like trying to submit for a, a magazine cover or for photos in an article, uh, are there certain requirements like pixel sizes that they should keep in mind? So when they're submitting it, they're submitting their best op- you know, their best work instead of sure blowing possibly a, a single shot at something. Haha. <laughs> yeah, and and you mentioned another thing too about the the editorial industry. Um, I've found it in my experience to be very helpful to kind of know your audience, you know, know the editors and um, the, the type of content that they like to publish um, so that you can kind of, you know, optimize your efforts of, of where you're trying to focus, um, you know, getting your work into. Um, And yes, typically like every publication, um, or brand will have like a submission guideline sheet or um, sometimes it's it's in the publication or it's on their website or you know figure out who you need to get in touch with and ask them for that material and they'll be happy to send it to you um, sometimes they want like a set number of images um, you know and a lot of times you will have an editor that wants to buy photos with an article um, so it, it can be very helpful to kind of, you know, be able to, to provide both. Um, but there's certainly people that are, are working as photographers, as writers, you know, working together. Sure. More and more lately, it seems like, I mean, oh, look, yeah. we just started the ambassador program beginning of the year. Well, yeah. I guess last year now, but uh-huh. you know, and to see the people that came forward and have enjoyed doing the writing and sending yeah. photography in and. Yeah, it's been it's been pretty cool to see. And you just see kind of this network building. And, and, you know, like you said, everybody has their own style. It's cool to look at people that are on Facebook and Instagram and see their progression over, let's say, the last five years. You know, they've been posting photos and building these followings and you see the progression there. Sure. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's a whole interesting world when you get into, you know, we all live in the moment. And I think as sportsmen. It's about two things. It's about the moment and it's about the memory. Oh, 100%. Those are the only two things. And, you know, I've seen it firsthand is as people get older, the memories start to fade. They can't Mm. remember all the stories. Right. You know, but the photos are there. Yep. And they're there forever. So it's, 
it's an interesting thing to me, you know, well, as it's, far it's, as the draw to photography and the purpose sure. behind it. You're going with a purpose. You're not just going and taking pictures. You have a a mission, let's say. Well, and and I mean, I I kind of sometimes I'll I'll head out with an intent to hunt. Sometimes I'll head out with an intent to photograph. Sometimes it's both. It is hard to do both. It's like you said, you're trying to run dogs, you're trying to take photos. There's a lot going on. Um, but you know, and I, I think I mentioned this in in the blog too. Is just don't get too frustrated or jaded. You know, just c- kind of keep things in perspective. Um, you know, some of this stuff is out of our control and, uh, you know, if something doesn't go right today, you've always got tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So lighting camera angle, don't take it too serious. (laughs) Yeah. And you're, and you're set. Yeah. Have fun with it. And like I said, um, uh, another thing, if we're kind of speaking to the people that are, are, are trying to get noticed or, or get involved is be true to yourself, you know, set your expectations, like based on your experience or based on your capacity, you know, try to walk before you can run and just enjoy the process. Um, you have to kind of develop a little bit of a thick skin to be turned down, um, you know, to be told no, but just take that and run with it and just continue to strive to be better, you know, each day. Um, there's always something that you can do. Um, and you know, don't try to compete with the guy or the gal next to you. Just like own your own lane, um, figure out what makes, yeah, figure out what makes you unique, figure out what value you can bring. Um, and just, yeah, just go with it. Awesome, man. Well, I appreciate you coming back on. I know we had you you on last week, but. We appreciate you coming back, and I'm sure there's lots more to come. Sure. So again, I mean, just to give you a plug too, where can people find your work? Yeah, thanks. Um, So I'm I'm uh, at Chris Ingram, uh, 802 on Instagram, Chris Ingram on Facebook. Um, You know, feel free to check out some of my work on the on the Ambassador blog there. Um, And um, yeah, shoot me a message. I'm happy if anybody's looking at camera gear. you know, wants any kind of helpful insight, I'm, I'm a resource. Awesome. Well, thanks, Chris. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Jason. Yeah, you bet.